once he's got his foot in the door, yeah, quite literally, pardon the pun, but in this case, yeah. as soon as he's got his foot in the door, he just takes the piss as much as possible, takes the piss more, takes the piss more, and then if you introduce him to someone, he'll be seeing them as another person he can take the piss with. And it's like, oh, what was it? Someone went to see a talk he did once, and two people I knew said he was at the bar, and this Polish guy was talking to him, and he kept buying him drinks. And they said, well, why don't you... And they were, he was offering to buy them drinks because they came over and started talking to Greg and they clearly knew him. And Greg then kind of became rude to them because they were like, no, 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 don't worry, we'll buy our own drinks. Or we were, they were trying to buy him a drink because he just bought... Do you see what I mean? But you see, Greg didn't like that because then obviously the, the influence is he'll have to buy a drink. And of course, he doesn't want to buy anyone anymore. Of course. He just, he'll occasionally buy a drink. Yeah. But you see, for every two drinks you buy him, he'll buy you one at, 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 at most. And like yeah. he'll go when he met Jim Betzer in London, um, he was going, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're going to go to the Crystal Kebabs and go in there. And he's going, oh, and he's like all the food and he's trying to be the big boss sort of thing. And then it comes to the end of the meal and he's just sitting there. And he's sort of, if you like, he's been the sort of post, but he hasn't got any money. <laughs> yeah, or he's got a bit of money, or he's got the money, he just doesn't want to pay it. So, so I said, I'll buy this, because I just yeah. didn't want to get into sort of the embarrassment. It it's really embarrassing. Expensive. Everyone's probably staring at him at the end, thinking, it's well, you, you hosted this, didn't you? <laughs> it's, always, it's, always, it's always the same, though. All the time with him, it's always, always the same. So, you, I mean, he's not always tight like that, but it's yeah. like whatever social situation you get in with him he will always do masses of sort of um things that he shouldn't do and it's like yeah like he'll decide he doesn't like somebody and you know that if it's a woman he will have come on to him when you weren't paying attention <laughs> and you just know that's the only reason if she's like looking woman that'll be why he's fallen out with her yeah she's you know? a she's a rejected his advances had she got, i mean yeah she said what Mm. No, no, or well, probably it probably haven't been rude to her or anything, but then it's just he lives in a kind of delusional fantasy world. Of course. But he does know, but, but by the way, to be clear, he does know he's being dishonest with these people. He definitely knows he's being dishonest with them. He just thinks they're fools who need their money taken off him, off them to give to him. That's, you, that's what you, that is. Don't, you, don't be thinking he's lost his mind and he doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing in this case. And you're talking about the King supporters, right? The fake King supporters, rather. Yeah, he just sees them as like sheep to be shorn. I know this without even knowing anything about them because I know how he, how he is, so I know exactly what that will be. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, some of us, including his family, th feel like he might um, have some sort of um, mental health issues, but um, I can totally uh, see that, you know, he probably does understand very much so what he's doing. Um, he definitely understands. Look, it's, it's a bit like if, if you and I um, got in some trouble and we were in court and um, we'd done something we shouldn't have done and they found out that you were a little bit cuckoo, it doesn't mean you're going to get off and not go to prison. You have to be quite bad before they'll even consider that. They'll say, well, yeah, uh, he's a bit eccentric, but it doesn't mean yeah. you could have glassed that guy in that bar. A lot of people that know... Didn't like his Donald Duck impression. A lot of people that know him or have known wouldn't him... wouldn't get you off. Uh, they also say the same thing that you know he's sociopathic and narcissi narcissistic. So you know, as a sociopath would do, he wouldn't really care about the impact on others. Um, he would just go with it. Um, no, he, the thing, sorry, is, is the fact that he caters his behaviour for his audience. If he thinks you are a retard, right? Yeah, he will come out with all sorts of stupid shit. If he thinks you're like a hippie who believes in all sorts of ethereal stuff, yeah, then he'll 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 stress all of that. So I'm not saying there's anything yeah. wrong with the way different people think, but yeah. he will just stress. He'll just social, be a social chameleon. But the thing with him, unlike most social chameleons, is his sociopathic streak is more extensive in that um, where most of them will keep you up the wraps. He's so keen to sort of exploit situations that, you know, it could happen. What, what will take a normal sociopath months normally to sort of develop or weeks he will he'll act on in like five minutes mm. wow yeah uh like the cigars you know the cigars oh yeah the cigars i bought gave him a lot of yeah and he started having cigars all the time whenever he did interviews and people started telling him what you're doing smoking cigars there's just a big cloud of big <laughs> little shit room right and then it was like there's a big cloud of cigar smoke and he thought it made him look cool but of course it doesn't because no. he's wearing like a ballot club and it just makes him look like a 
well, I don't know, I don't know what it makes him look like, but it's just, it's just, it's just, I think, again, and I think the other thing is, you know, like, he, he kind of gets things a little bit off key sometimes, so he doesn't realise, because he, he, he really does live his, he, it's not a, it is a delusion to a point, but it's mainly not. It's mainly it's an act, and he knows it'll appeal to fuck ups. Yeah. And he's decided it's a big market. They're going to give me money. The more off the wall and stupid I am, the more money they'll give me. And you know, like, can you remember that guy called Anthony John Hill, who also was called Mordeep, who is like he apparently wrote the M nine eleven no seven effect. Now, the most funniest thing about that is that's quite an interesting um, video, but. There's no way that fuck up could have ever written that, yeah? yeah. And that guy's going around wearing like a Muslim skull skull cap and a shell suit with a big rather Christmas beard. That guy has been selected because he is so strange. Yeah. And the reason he's the way he's written that, or you know, made that a seven seven ripple effect. And there's no way anybody who's got the technical savvy to write something like that will be going around giving out CD, CDs, because yeah. if you're good at computers and stuff. You don't give out CDs. It was way past the time you'd be giving out DVDs. You'd be going around pushing it via the internet. That's what you do. But that guy, when he was talking, he was always talking about, oh, cost of printing DVDs and stuff. And everyone knows that that's not how you get a, a message out. You get it out by, um, you know, publicizing it and then just give people a link. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Well, that's what Greg, I reckon that's the kind of thing Greg got his inspiration from because that guy got quite a lot of traction for a while. And looked like an oddball, didn't he? He had a big long beard. Greg had a big long beard. He was wearing like a balaclava or a woolly hat and stuff when he was doing interviews with a big coat. I mean, why, why was he doing that? He was inside in someone's house. Yeah, the wackier, the more the more sort of attention you'll get, I suppose. Do you have any idea when he was meant to be in Germany doing this training on psychology? No, I think it's most bullshit. Yeah. Probably. Most likely bullshit. Okay, moving on. Uh, so... Uh, you did tell me a story about, um, so when he was with you, you told me that he didn't uh, didn't like to walk anywhere. Is that correct? No, no. He's got, he's got no problem with walking, right? Problem is, is he's got this, as, as long as it's allowed, and he keeps pushing it even when it's kind of not. He keeps saying things like, what we really we should have, so we should have like a taxi to take us around the place or whichever. It's just like he kind of gets these ridiculous ideas that it looks better if you um, have just got like kind of unlimited expense account and you can do anything you want. And like, you know, like if you could wait for the bus to go back from the pub or you could uh, get a taxi to go up the exact same road, he would sooner wait half an hour to get a taxi than to get the bus. It's, just because you go, oh, yeah, 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 I'm worth it sort of thing. It's almost as if uh, it's beneath, he thinks it's beneath him. Like, oh, only commoners take, uh, the, they walk places. No, it, 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 it's not even that. He's got no problem with taking public transport, but it's like he's just got this, it's like people with this ego which is out of control that just keeps piping up and they sort of can't really help it and it just brings over and then all of a sudden it's just nothing's good enough. You know? The fact that he hasn't got any money mm. at the time, <clears throat> you know, if he had the money, he would be wasting his money like a drunk and sailor, yeah? yeah? But probably not on booze, because he'd probably think that because he's so entertaining, he shouldn't have to pay for any booze, everyone else should pay for his booze. Yeah, everyone should buy him a drink. <laughs> he wasted 60,000 euros this guy gave me, used to work, I think he was Norwegian or something or at least he worked in the Norway um, oil industry. And this guy obviously was taken in by Greg. I think the guy's a bit eccentric. And to be fair, what a lot, I've come across other people who work in, well, he's a Norwegian, and, um, you know, they work on these vessels and stuff, and they're off sure They go a little bit crazy. And, of course, the other thing is they've earned a load of money, so they kind of want to get some kind of bang for their buck so that they can spend it on something completely pointless and <laughs> interesting. You know, you kind of lose... You won't spend money on necessarily the same thing as somebody who's been working in Tesco's. Absolutely. Um, so why why did the this Norwegian give him sixty thousand? Was it to do to do with his books? Yeah, because yeah, no, because he thought it would help his research. But of course, Greg just then went back to Portugal, started hemorrhaging the money immediately on the hotels, a, ho a hotel, and then he was going out. And he said, "Oh, you can't even get anything to eat around there for less than like you know fifty fifty euros for dinner or whatever." 
you know, because he's like going out and he's he's like literally living like as though he's um, Keith Floyd, but he's not Keith Floyd. He's Greg Hallett. Like I know somebody knew that Keith Floyd, and he said, "Yeah, the guy's probably spent millions and millions and millions on just like living the high life every single day." And they were saying, "Yeah, he's very entertaining. Everyone likes him, but you know." just literally pissing all his money up the wall and eating everything he wants and doing everything he wants and if something needs to be bought he'll just buy it so, even though it doesn't need to be bought but in his head it needs to be bought <clears throat> so he just wasted all that money he wanted, that money could have actually been used been used for productively yeah he, he wanted to live like a king or even Lord Chancellor yeah exactly <laughs> uh, the other things that you're talking about was um uh, and this is uh, seems to be things uh, something that other people have told me. Uh, it, it seems to take everything in a sexual way. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, I've I've heard that you know he'd made various advances uh, to women. Um, that he feels that you know someone of his age should have a twenty-one-year-old girlfriend. You know, it yeah, made well, remarks like he, that. Yeah, he, uh, he, 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 he generally he has just got this. But then again, I suppose, um, well, his sister, his sister sent me a message, this is going back years ago, put it on one of the videos, mm. the vi sorry, the video I did about him. And that video wasn't really just parroting about him, it was just saying, well, what a fucking interesting character he was, you know? And it, it wasn't just slagging him off. Like, yeah, no, I got that, was, I got that. You, you mean, you said positive things about him in the video too, you know? It's, uh, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. It, you just highlighted where you were like, no, come on, that's that. that that was crazy, <laughs> you know, and you'd point out some of the things that, you know, that, well, that's bullshit. Um, so I totally got that. Uh, got, uh, so the other yeah, thing, you see, sorry, Oh no, I was, I was just going to say, uh, on that sort of sexual, it take, he seems to take a lot of things in a, in a sexual way or, 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 well, his sister, his sister commented on that video yeah. that when he was in it and he told me about the fact he'd been in this kind of, what did he call it? A, um, a commune he called it he called yeah. it a sex commune and he said the reason he didn't like it and this is why he stopped eating meat was because and he doesn't eat meat it's not just one of these people who says he doesn't eat meat but does yeah eat meat just in people's backs of her and he's not one of them he does generally not eat meat he said what it was is when they were killing the pigs they were like chopping them and then they were like continuing to saw through and then they were like twisting their head around to you know like, twisting it around like 360 degrees to pull the head off and he said it was all just a bit disgusting yeah and it put him off and he just put him off disgusting me. so the point so he did he did talk yeah. about this yeah. you're talking about center point center point um yeah. center point con con uh, commune which was basically a sex cult um yeah. and and that was taken down eventually uh because the, some of the the ringleaders of the cult, they were involved in child abuse. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing. But I don't know much about that, but that's what his sister said, and I'd imagine his sister's right. And, of course, the thing with... Um, I don't know... Um, one of the things is that these people... It's a bit like Freud. You know, Freud at least pretended he saw everything in a sexual way. Yeah. Now, you remember, he was actually a cocaine addict, wasn't he? So that's probably yeah. part of the... Reason. But at the same time even though probably it does permeate into every sort of aspect of your thinking at some level, it's it, some people literally, they can't, they run with something and they keep running even when it's like become irrelevant, you know? Yeah. And that's what I think for him. So for instance, he's got this idea like that, um, like, I mean, one of the, the books I know actually read he did, which was like, what's it called? Um, I can't, there's three of them. Uh, they were called the Sex Collectors. There were three books. Oh, yeah. Terror and yeah. Uh, yeah, there were three of them. No, I never read them. I read bits of bits of them that he showed me, but I just basically couldn't be bothered. But maybe I would have read them. But then, again with him, it was like, he'd say, oh, we should read this, have a look at this, have a look at that. But at the same time, you're trying to get, like, information from what he said in the past and verify it, and you're not doing that. So, you know what I mean? You get to this point where you stop, and you say, look, no, hang on a minute. Not read, 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 read then get back to you because it's all in your book. Mm. Tell me about how that other thing that you were claiming, how you actually came to this conclusion. You know, look, don't keep telling me it's in your other book, it's in your other book. You're sitting there now. Yeah, talk it's to me. Yeah. You. Don't tell me to go tell and read, more, read all the books that, you know, you, you, he's living in your place, you know. Mm. <laughs> it should be one of the perks that you can actually pick his brains. Um but, yeah, yeah, no, I did pick his brain. Yeah, but the, yeah. A lot of the stuff he said is interesting, but some of his outrageous claims, 
I mean, listen, I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm not one of these people who's dismissive of things. If someone can explain something and they just take a while explaining it, that's, that's fine. Sometimes that happens. You don't, you don't get to learn stuff in life by just shooting everybody down before they've had a chance to explain something. Mm. And there is quite a lot to some of the things he says, but the, the more outrageous claims, like the one with the Berlin Wall, it's like, it's like he hasn't even thought the story through properly. He's come out, he's tried to put so many bits of bullshit in there that they just don't even make any sense whatsoever. And also his way of saying it, well, I thought I'd claim responsibility there because it's 20 years ago now and no one's claimed responsibility. He almost sort of thinks that he's got a right as a leading historian <laughs> to just claim, oh, well, I'm going to put a theory out there, which in a way, when you realise how much bullshit history is, it's actually quite an honest, honest way of teasing with it. Just come out with some bullshit, throw that out of the theory. Yeah. Why not? Why not include yourself in it? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. But you see, this, the thing is, when you realise all history is bullshit, there's a part of you that sort of thinks, well, why not? Why not just make up a bit of bullshit like David Irving? David Irving's probably the best historian ever, but at the same time, David Irving does put things in his books, and not in his talks, <clears throat> which he knows are not true. So, um, you know, he, he gets away with it because most of the stuff he says is very insightful and well-researched, so he can put a bit of bullshit in there. You know, Greg knows about how this works, so... But you see, the thing with me is... I don't know. It's not like if you can't beat them, join them with me. It's like, well, they shouldn't be doing it. I'm not going to just do it because everyone else is doing it. Yeah. You told me an interesting anecdote about one time when uh, you uh, had reached into your pocket in front of Greg and it was quite... Oh, no, no. I was, I was he, so basically, right, yeah, I was in... He, the room he was staying was big, yeah? Yeah. And it also had, like, windows overlooking, like, so it was in North London. And if you looked out the window, you could see all the way down, and, you know, you could see the sort of skyline of central London, you know, like, down, if you look down. Yeah? Uh -huh. <clears throat> and um, I had jeans on. And uh, I remember I was looking for something in my pocket, probably tissue, probably had a runny nose or something like that. And... And I, you know, you know, you put your hand in your pocket. You, 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 sometimes things fall out of your pocket without you realising. Yeah, yeah. And I was there, and I was talking to him. Now he's got a, a desk set up with his computer, and he's got—I mean, he's typing away. Um, and yeah, I, uh, and he was like, "What's that?" He sort of said something like, "What's that?" And I was like, um, "I was like, look, I didn't even know what you're talking about." And then I, I went, "There's a condom on the floor." And I was like, "It wasn't like a huge condom. It's like in a packet." Yeah. <laughs> and I, I said, "Oh, it must fall out of pocket." And the thing with Greg is, instead of just going thinking, oh, "It must just fall out of his pocket." Greg sees it, things that, you see what I'm trying to say? He thinks, it's like his head is just always thinking of everything in a kind of manner, which doesn't make any sense. I'll give you an example. If any of your listeners um, are familiar with Chris, Chris Bibby, Chris Bibby analyzes pictures, yeah, of say like one of the royal family, and they'll have like a baby on their knee. And he'll be going, look, that guy's got his hand on that little kid's penis. And it's not, it's just he's got his hand, the little kid's sitting in his knee and he's put his arm around him or something. Do you see yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. He saw the condom. There's obviously nothing sexual going on. Like, there's nothing sexual. No, of course not. So it's something like, oh, oh, what's that? And he's like, all sort of like, yeah. it's almost like somebody done something wrong yeah. to him or something. You know, like, what, <laughs> what's what, that for? What are you going to do to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do to me? Sort of yeah. It's that kind of just, he reads, he, but the thing is, he knows, he's got, he, he doesn't think oh, I'm a homo, do you know what I mean? He yeah. knows I'm not. So it's like, but the thing is, he's so hardwired to read into everything, some kind of sexual undertone, mm -hmm. that even when he knows there isn't one, he's so, it's like one of the things he just immediately starts running with. And yeah. that's the thing is, it's like, if you have this idea that the world runs on shame, which I think it, to a large extent, that is used, blackmail is a major thing it is, but... The point is, not every single thing in life could ever possibly run on that system because if it did all run on that system, yeah. the people would be, become so ultra careful, you'd never be able to catch them out with anything, would, yeah. would you? Yeah. Logically, it can't it can't play out that way because if every pet politic, I mean, if you've seen that film, The Bank Job, you know, The Bank Job, all this Jason's yeah. dressing and it's all about how they um, have to rob a bank and the idea is that they're going to rob the bank vault take the safety deposit boxes out because one of them's got incriminating pictures of someone in the royal family doing something they shouldn't have been mm -hmm. doing or would be embarrassing for them. And it also had a load of pictures of MPs and stuff that had been secretly taken. Now, a lot of this has been massively publicised over the years, but you've got to remember that PSYOPs have been going on for a long time. And like this bullshit with J Jeffrey Epstein, if it was genuinely a problem what was happening, 
it would never have leaked in the press. You wouldn't have that cunt Sean Atwood doing endless um, podcasts about it all the time, literally maybe sometimes more than one a day, just mm. going on and on and on and on and on. You know who Sean Atwood is, don't you? Yes, I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been pushed out there, and his whole job, he's clearly a counterintelligence agent. He's, I'm sure he's never been to prison, but it doesn't really matter if he was in prison. But he said, when he set his channel up, it was to highlight the fact that in the American prison system, they're sticking all these mental people in there, and secondarily, you know, warehousing mental people. And, and he's also saying that they were um, putting in loads of, like, basically often black or poor people, you know, for marijuana offences. Yeah. And then they get into prison and they get into all sorts of trouble. And the next thing, they'd be in prison forever because they'd end up stabbing someone because they tried to stab them or they'd be put up to it or bullied or they'd get involved with all sorts of stuff. It's, it's, so it's, you're basically looking at the criminal class and you're filling yeah. up, you know, making a massive industry out of it. But, of course, he's never, ever actually done a show about that. Now, this is a bit like Greg. He says all this stuff, but he never actually gets down to the nuts and bolts, right? Yeah. So instead of going on about... It's a very, actually a very accidental, ac excellent analogy. So instead of getting down to what you're saying, your modus operandi is your sort of, your goal is to prove this thing is, your modus operandi is all about talking about sexual stuff and that yeah. also Atwood often does as well. Is um, it, 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 and it's like, it was there that you got down to the evidence of them killing disabled people in prisons in America as a systematic thing. You know, it, it, he's never actually does it, but then he says that's the whole reason for the channel. Yeah, all he talks about is smut. Mm. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Sean Atwood, actually, um, because I heard on the grapevine, actually, that he mm. was um, doing trying to do videos about Greg. And then uh, I heard, I heard, I don't know how true this is, that he may be interviewing Greg at some point. And I thought, well, Greg's not going to let anyone interview him that doesn't, that's not going to you know play along to some extent and it just made me think uh you know okay well it, i've heard some good things about sean atwood's videos but um you know i do wonder how sort of you know whether he oh, i did actually think you know is he deep state is he some sort of uh counterintelligence agent and that's exactly what you just said that was your view so it is one and so is true geordie podcast and so is that wanker what's his name james english and so is that um What's call it? London, London, London Thomas, Real. Who's an American? London yeah. Real. They pop up. They're immediately pushed to the top of your YouTube um, preferences and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and all they do is talk about, you know, sometimes quite well presented, interesting shows about interesting stuff. But then they constantly reinforce as an influence in the background. It's almost like I'm explaining to you how to um, hack into the Central Intelligence Agency computer. And then as you sort of lean over my shoulder to look at what I'm doing, I say, go away because of COVID-19. It's like, it's like people are watching it because they're interested in working out how to hack into the CIA central computer. Yeah. But then you're, as they're looking at that in the alpha state, that's what they're looking at. That is the hunted thing. You know, like if you're watching a deer and you're hunting it, and then I reach into your pocket and steal your marijuana. Mm. Yeah? Because yeah, yeah. you're not worried about covid19 and then that goes into your head oh yeah better be worried about covid19 even though it doesn't exist you see what i mean it's like they constantly and they constantly reinforce things about these psyops like madeline mccann you know she didn't exist everyone with any brains realized she didn't exist but the guy i was in contact with you can find him on the internet at at underscore not travis not travis yeah not T R. A B I S. Sure. I forget his name. Peter Cullen. His name is in Scouser, and he explains how not only is the Madeleine McCann story completely fictitious, they've actually put in lots of aid, aid what do they call it, aid and memoirs or something like what, like an Agatha Christie novel. She actually tells you who the person who's done it is at the start, but you've got to find a way of finding that out. There's mm. a code she puts in with literary aids. Yeah, it's sort of advanced literature, which most people, you know, it's kind of an, it's an ancient sort of art that's been around for a long time. It's quite sophisticated. And he's saying, look, they put this in there and they put this in there and they put this in there. Now, if you're still in the, in the sort of, you know, cloud cuckoo land where you think she even existed, then you're, you're just living in cloud cuckoo land. But if you actually get past that, you start realising it's actually quite clever what they've done, you know? Interesting. 
But let's let's move yeah. the conversation. So the, 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 is actually flavoured with a genuine artistic flair. Yeah, no, and you have to be, you have to be kind of have a bit of the knowledge to know how to kind of decode or to realise that. Well, it's a bit, it's a bit like if you, um, I'll give you an example. If you are dealing with, say, like public school boys, right? They tie their ties in a certain way. They don't wear like really slick, smart clothes normally. They wear public school boy clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if you go along with a big fat tie knot on, with a harrow tie, with a big fat tie knot on, like a football or a rape charge, they're going to know. They're, they're not going to think, oh, maybe you're just not very good at tying ties. They're going to know that that is not the way to tie a tie mm -hmm. if you're one of them. Yeah? yeah. They're yeah. going to know straight away. It's like Freemasons, the way you stand at the stuff when you meet them and shake their hand. You've yeah. got to do it in a certain way or they'll see straight through it. So it's for the people in the know like a code to know whether you know or not sure. and it's a code yeah so they're not interested in the mass of people who've got absolutely no idea what's going on these are codes that are put in everything uh, i understand and greg does hint at this but the thing is he doesn't really understand about these codes he knows they're there but he starts inventing his own codes which don't exist <laughs> yeah like the royal marks <laughs> Like the world marks, but I'm glad you mentioned them because one of them was, this was a genuinely interesting one. There was this crystal um, goblet or something. And if you looked at the bottom, it was made out of like stems. Like let's say you had like four, a four-sided prism type uh, curved handle on something, you know, four-sided. And then that sort of handle's got like four pieces which come together, you know, four sides. Mm -hmm. And then at the top of it, it wasn't four sides. It was like seven sides or something. Or it was like five sides that went, then went into four that went into five or six that went into nine or something like that. Sure. So instead of it following up in the normal way where if you had like um, a four, a four sides on the stem of the glass, you generally have four sides on the top of the glass you know, it, unless it was just round. It had like a different amount of sides. That was unusual. And I thought that is actually very unusual. That must be very difficult to do, I'd imagine. And that does look like something that genuinely would be something that people would notice if they were just had them around your house and you were having a big banquet. But then if you look at it again, you think, well, isn't that very strange? You think, yeah, that is very strange. That's a very clever little touch. I didn't notice that. You know? So you mentioned the Berlin Wall earlier. What was his story around Berlin Wall? Well, I'm not even sure the story doesn't change a bit, but <clears throat> you see along the uh, same lines as um, the reconstruction of the subconscious, he had this idea that you can actually, uh, you know, it, an extension of this level of consciousness would be that you could kind of like do, do extraordinary things such as jump into people's bodies, yeah. Yeah. body jumping as he was called but he, like um, I said in the video he, he's had such a problem with it partying with enough cash to have a curry why don't you body jump into the man in the takeaway just to show me and get the curry for <laughs> three or five pounds instead of 35 pounds or Absolutely. something like that yeah uh, no, but anyway but, but he couldn't he couldn't demonstrate it obviously because he can't do it yeah, but I'm not saying it can't be done, but he definitely can't do it. But, but either way, you know. Yeah. And what what he would act entail also? I mean, you could probably project your mind someone and make them do them. Sure, you can do that, but it, it it's it's complicated. Do you know what I mean? And again, with all these things, people run with them and they think it's explained absolutely everything. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of things that can be done. Yeah, but they people, you know. They don't generally happen, but they probably can be done. But I just it's it's way above things that he understands about, at least in practical terms. Now anyway, he said that when he was talking about oh I'll claim it, oh, you know, it's mine sort of thing, he was saying, Well the Berlin Wall, when he was doing this work in Russia, you know, when he was um, taken on by an architecture firm, he said in Moscow there was lots of cheap property and um, his firm wanted to invest in these properties, his architecture firm you know, who is like an intern or something like that, just after he got qualified. So his first job wasn't really architecture. It was being like their man on the ground or one of their men on the ground in Moscow to buy some of this property that had gone down due to the Berlin Wall falling down. Of course, yeah. yeah. 
before the fall of communism, or maybe just before that. But anyway, he kind of links the two together. So that, that real, probably real event in his life was used as the base of it. Also, he was married, I think, to someone from Hungary. And he was in Hungary. Uh, and he was saying that that was the thing about the reconstruction of the subconscious was in Hungary. He said the people were all acting in a manner which didn't appear to be in their own best interest. Actually, funny enough, other people are actually, I've mentioned that to other people, and they said, yeah, I've been hungry. That's why I used to think when we went there, you know, like years ago, they appeared to be like that. They appeared to all be just going around in their own little bubble. Mm. And something odd about them. So anyway, there's probably something to all this. But anyway, then he goes off the crazy deep end, and he starts saying that when the Berlin Wall came down, he went over on like a male plane, you know, so he was like going across to Berlin, sort of a freight aeroplane, um, you know, with, for the CIA or some fucking nonsense. And I think there was another Russian spy with him, a sexy Russian spy or something like that, some CIA agent nonsense, yeah. Mm. She was blonde and she was about 21. I, can't, I, can't, you know, I forget the exact details. But, um, you know, then he got there and then um, <clears throat> he somehow managed to get the uh, guard drunk who was, would have opened, you know, let them through the gate or let them down the wall or something, I forget. And um, he, uh, anyway, body jumped into the guard. But, oh yeah, the guard was busy with some prostitute who had been sent there by the CIA, possibly the one who was on the plane with him. It's just, the story's just fucking stupid. And the thing is, well, if you've entertained him with this prostitute and he's not paying any attention to his work, why why body jump into him? Why do you need to get a CIA agent <coughs> from America to go and do all this stuff when you get body jump into him? The story just doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't. It don't, really doesn't. Um, I find it quite funny. It so, really doesn't. So... so you see what I mean? Yeah. So what does he go on to say the then? He, he jumps into this uh, Russian bodyguard. Um, did he, didn't he make a claim after that of something that he did in, in whilst he was in the? Yeah, he let he, he let them let the people knock the wall down or open the gates or something stupid. But then again, like I don't, I don't even think he really. But then he said some stupid stuff about um, how the way you do it, you kind of train people. And apparently this is how sort of certain special units in the army do it, is they terrify people so badly that they kind of um, stop worrying about death and stuff, and therefore they can really focus. And then he, But then he starts again making it really stupid, and he starts going on about Anubis, Anubis, and then Anubis, this, and then it's like, it's always the same. It's like he can't just, he always has to make things... His story's things even more spectacular. Stuff. Make up even more stuff to the story <laughs> to embellish it. He embellishes things to the point where he contradicts the premise of what he's saying. He kind of makes out, it's like, well, what the fuck has that got to do with anything? And it's just like, then you realise, well, you can't really, really think logically through it. And you say, well, hypothetically, if that's true, well, why is that happening? And then why is that happening? But of course, the whole thing's just made up, so it's just stupid. Mm. Okay, yeah, that was just one... I do believe that you could... I do, I do, I do believe that you can probably do things to your subconscious which would start making it really work sure. how it's meant to but in fact it would probably be led by your subconscious it would be more like allowing your subconscious to truly guide you better that and you know letting it work like a google search engine so it starts sucking people and it'd be useful to you to get to where you need to be to work, get where you want to go but of course you don't know where you want to go your subconscious knows so it's about letting your subconscious you know be channeled yeah. Um, and affect your, you know, be more more closely linked to your thought conscious, your conscious mind. And, um, yeah, I, I do believe that can be true, but and that's why I said I was the most interested in speaking to him. But then he just goes off on all these fucking crazy tangents. Sure. And then he just starts annoying you. So, like... Um, <laughs>